talk to me. Information, news, and entertainment on demand. WSRadio.com. Accomplishment Coaching is proud to present the following fine programming. Accomplishment Coaching, where coaches lead and leaders coach. AccomplishmentCoaching.com. Welcome to WS Radio's Business Spotlight Show. Thanks for listening in. I'm Wade Taylor, and on today's show, we're shining our spotlight on the world of small business, and I'm joined by a couple of guests. First off, the lead is B.B. Alexander, who is the founder of the North County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and they're putting on an event for small business this September. So, B.B., go ahead and tell us a little bit about the event. Thank you very much, uh, Wade, for inviting us today. And Michelle, thank you for being here with us. I, I really appreciate all your past uh, work with me. Uh, Michelle Nashhoff, very famous author here in the United States of America. She's written a couple of books and uh, also articles uh, regarding s- several uh, subjects. Hi, Michelle. My pleasure. Alrighty, and so uh, what we're going to be talking to Michelle about, again, let me just uh, define that. It's Michelle Nashhoff, and she is both the president of Electrofab Sales as well as an author of a book that's been getting a lot of positive attention, Can American Manufacturing Be Saved? And she's going to be one of the speakers at the Business Expansion Symposium that's coming up this September the 17th at uh, the sdg e Technology Innovation Center. So that's here in Claremont, Mesa area of San Diego. And you can learn all the details about this event at nbizlatino.org, nbizlatino.org. And again, it's going to be a great event with tons of great information, including what Michelle's going to be talking about, and that is American manufacturing that is critical to the lifeblood of America. And, Michelle, I think you can, you're can you helping people understand that it didn't completely go away. There's been you know a, a base of it, but it is ready for a rebound, correct? Oh, yes, it is. It has been rebounding. I mean, we, we did lose 5.8 million manufacturing jobs between 2000 and 2010 in the depths of the recession, but since 2010... We've been growing again. We've uh, recaptured about a million manufacturing jobs now because of certain trends, um, one of them being the fact that um, wages have been rising in China and other parts of Asia, and American manufacturers have been able to be more competitive. Uh, there are certain trends with technologies and also um, more and more companies going through what's called a lean transformation through Lean Six Sigma, where they learn to eliminate waste and also reduce variability in their product development. So more and more companies are going through lean training and and being able to be more competitive. Additive manufacturing, 3D printing are helping manufacturers um, keep the manufacturer from the beginning of new product development because it's easy to get into uh, new products with additive manufacturing. I'm a director on the board of the San Diego Inventors Forum, so I've been working with startup companies and inventors for the last 10 years to help them do that. Also, there's been a trend in returning manufacturing to America through reshoring, which is going through a total cost of analysis to be able to compare the the hidden cost of doing business offshore with doing business in the USA. And that's been a big factor since 2010 in helping manufacturers return from uh, Asia to manufacture in the U.S., there's more interest in made in USA products by especially the new Z generation. Uh, you know, millennials started, but, it, but it's really a bigger trend with the Z generation because they they appreciate um, 
you know, sustainability and green manufacturing, which we have in the United States compared to other parts of the world. So that's how, that's another factor. The industry 4.0, which encompasses automation, robotics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, the industrial internet of things and digitization of uh, manufacturing processes and, and also the use of, uh, you know, connectivity with everything being connected with, you know, social media, manufacturing, engineering design, et cetera. These are all some of the trends that are helping rebuild manufacturing. And it's so important because manufacturing is the foundation of the middle class and really the greatest producer of our gross domestic product. So we have to be able to keep and rebuild American manufacturing actually to be able to defend our country. And now small businesses are having the opportunity to be able to get in on these new trends to their benefit because now it, there's more interest in having especially customized products. So the small manufacturer that is only doing low volume and making custom products, his products can be in more demand worldwide now because of the great interest in having made in USA products all over the world, even in China. They want made in USA products. So we we can need to take advantage of this opportunity and this event will help small businesses learn how to get into this new you know opportunity for global expansion, expanding their businesses to be able to sell internationally. So this is going to be a very important event. Too many small businesses just rely on repeat orders from existing customers, and they don't look at new opportunities for expanding their business. So this kind of event opens the doors to being able to learn about what they need to do to expand their customer base outside of their immediate area. Yeah, you're going to be on a slow path to closing if you're not either expanding or planning for expansion. And, you know, I love the fact that you're drawing attention back to the manufacturing. I do like to make the point to people that, um, as you well know, while the volume of manufacturing, say, went down, um, there, America did hold a position in the world of manufacturing, and it seems to me that it's based on automation and expertise that equates to efficiencies because there's some stuff that you need America's high level of uh, technological acumen to be able to actually produce. Is that not correct? Yes, that's true. But it's actually the customization of products. People want to have the, the products more customized to their needs and not just the mass produced in great and high volume. So we've even got back into furniture manufacturing and clothing manufacturing now because American manufacturers right here can, you know, uh, shall we say, right upon the, the new trends. They can to, do faster turnaround and take advantage of different uh, fashion trends to be able to make something right here in the U.S. Uh, we've even had furniture manufacturing coming back to the states of North and South Carolina, which nobody thought, for a while, nobody thought we were ever going to get it back. And there's now, you know, maker spaces helping uh, startup companies be able to get into the world of manufacturing for furniture. Yeah, and that's how I'd like to kind of finish this conversation off, being we've got, you know, a, a set amount of time. And after this, we'll go into the event itself. But talk about how the technology has dropped barriers to entry of business because capitalization costs have dropped dramatically. They have, because it used to be very expensive to start a new product where you had to pay for tooling to do a part that was, say, plastic molded or, or you know, cast out of metal. It was the tooling that was expensive, and that was what was driving going over to China to get the tooling cause to, to get a prototype. But now you can have that prototype made by 3D printing and additive manufacturing right here in the United States, very fast and very low cost. 
and so you can get your prototype and your first, you know, uh, trial products to be able to test the market and show to potential investors. And also the crowdfunding, Kickstarter and Indiegogo, have really helped in, uh, startup entrepreneurs get their initial funding to be able to get their product into the marketplace. Yeah, so it's just there's a huge amount of awareness that we hope people have. And if they don't, they need to come to the Small Business Symposium and learn from brilliant people like Michelle Nash Hoff about what is possible there. So can you t- talk to us a moment about what I'd like you to encompass is a couple of things. Um, how you're hoping that both small manufacturers as well as the businesses that depend on them should come and learn at this event and why it's important for you to get out in the community and meet people face to face in addition to your large online presence. It's very important because it's, you know, it's one of the few opportunities outside of paying for a very expensive booth at a trade show to get to, to actually have face-to-face meetings with potential customers and also potential vendors. So the big companies need to come to meet potential vendors. The small companies, small business need to come to meet potential customers. And right now we only have one local manufacturing trade show in San Diego that happens every May at the Del Mar Fairgrounds, and that's the only opportunity. So this kind of event is very important to be able to get those face-to-face meetings. You know, that's why, you know, I've been writing articles now since 2010 after my first book came out in 2009. So I've written over 300 articles on every kind of topic related to manufacturing, which people can read for free on my website, savingusmanufacturing.com. And my latest book is Rebuild Manufacturing, the Key to American Prosperity, and that's for sale on Amazon. So there's, you know, you know I have chapters on all these different topics, even how to, to uh, you know, solve the skills gap and attract the next generation of manufacturing workers, which is a big problem. Because now that we're growing manufacturing, we need more people to get into manufacturing careers. All righty. So can you give us the website one more time? Sure. It's savingusmanufacturing.com. All righty. And let me also encourage to you, if you're wanting to learn more, it's always easy to Google. And I found you on LinkedIn because that's kind of where the world's going in many ways. Again, right. this is Michelle. That's with a single L. So M-I-C-H-E-L-E Nash hyphen Hoff. Nash hyphen Hoff. So I'm sure you can find her books on Amazon by using her name and everything. And then let me again give one more shout out to the event that we're talking about, which is the Business Expansion Symposium put on by the North County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And learn everything you need to know about that event at nbizlatino.org, nbizlatino.org. Back with more in the future here on the Business Spotlight Show, powered by WSRadio.com. We are the worldwide leader in Internet talk. Hey, it's Wade Taylor of Reinvention Radio, and guess what? We're looking for guests just like you to feature on our show. Even better, 39 of our friends with super high-profile shows are looking for guests, too. And we're all getting together this September for one reason, to meet you. That's right, the Reinvention Radio team and hosts of shows like The Conscious Millionaire and The Solopreneur Hour will be at the New Media Summit. At the New Media Summit... You're guaranteed to have private meetings with 40 icons of influence who you can pitch to appear on their shows and leave with bookings in hand. It's happening September 22nd through 24th in San Diego. Only 150 people get to attend so that everyone has time to connect with the hosts they want to meet. Less than 50 spots remain. Collectively, we reach over a million people monthly. We'll help you get the visibility you deserve. Reserve your ticket at newmediasummit.net. Kenja Dixon was crowned the number one sales executive through hard work, deep thinking, and the revelation of universal talk laws. 
He now wants to share these lessons with you. Universal talk laws are what you need to know and use in business and at home to have successful and effective conversations. Kenji Dixon shares his wisdom, action plans, and wealth. Each book comes with a chance to win $10,000. Find Universal Talk Laws at KenjaDixon.com.